Hey everybody, it's Joanne B. And if you've been reading my blog for some time, you know that I love paper piecing. Today I have a quick little video tutorial that shows you kind of how I do it and some of my tips and tricks. I think paper piecing is such a great way to add texture and dimension and pattern to your projects and it really doesn't take much time. There's a few extra steps you can do to make your project that much more realistic and I hope you like my project. Thanks so much. To begin with, I've stamped my project onto an MFT perfect paper panel with my acrylic block and my memento ink, which is always made of choice. Additionally, I'm going to stamp it to each of these papers. I'm going to stamp it to the pattern paper. I'm going to stamp it to a piece of gray cardstock, a piece of craft cardstock, and again to this little scrap of kiwi. What's great about this is it works with scraps of paper, it works with pattern paper, it works with paper that you've cuddle bugged. For this piece, I'm going to trim out just the inside of the chalkboard. If you only have teeny pieces of paper, they're so worth saving because for the skirt, for this pattern paper, really all I need is her little skirt. For this one, I'm going to trim out just her little skirt. It doesn't matter that the rest of her is chopped off. For this piece, I just need the frame of the little easel. Before I trim it, I'm going to just color it with my Copic marker. And see, it doesn't even matter if I go out of the borders, because I'm going to be trimming this. Always remember when you're coloring paper pieced pieces you're going to use for paper piecing, to color first and then cut. The reason being, like I just said, it doesn't matter if you go right out of the border on this. You don't have to use your best elementary school coloring. You can literally just color and then cut when you go out of the lines because all the things that are outside of that frame, we don't need anyways. And if you, if you cut it first and then color, you're gonna find it really hard to hold down those little pieces and color them. All I need is just this little piece of her sweater. And there you go. For this piece, I'm going to trim out just her sweater. See, it doesn't matter that I stamped her head off or anything. All I need is that sweater. So it's all good. Trim out all your pieces. You'll want to make sure to trim out an extra set of head and hands, and you'll see why that's important real soon. Now my individual pieces are all trimmed out and I'm ready to get started. The first piece that I'm going to place is the chalkboard. You can see what I've done to give a little bit more detail is just ink the edges gently with my Vintage Distress inks. Now I'm repeating the same for the piece that's the chalkboard panel. I love my Quickie Glue Pen for paper piecing. It's a great medium. It just goes on just like ink. It goes on blue and then dries clear. Now I'm placing in my chalkboard. The great thing is it slides around a little bit if you need to fidget it. The glue doesn't dry immediately, so you have some wiggle room. Now I'm adding glue, again with my Quickie Glue Pen, right around the edge of that chalkboard where the wooden piece, the frame, is going to go. and then add that frame right in place. Push all the edges to make sure everything's adhered down firmly. Now I'm going to work on the clothes. I stamped this from a tiny piece of pattern paper, the skirt, and again I've inked the edges with my distressing ink. This just gives it a little bit more texture and depth so it's not flat. Quickie glue pen, and now slide that piece in place. I'm repeating the same procedure for her little sweater. But look what I almost forgot. You want to make sure to cut out those tiny little details like hands. You don't want to leave her hands sunken underneath her clothes. By stamping that tiny hand and then placing just the edge of it under her sweater, 
you get your layers right in the correct order. You can use a paper piercer or the tip of your scissors to just tack that little piece into place. And now I can safely glue her sweater in place. I've done the same thing with her other little hand. The other hand is a little hand holding a tiny piece of chalk. Some people might take a quick step and just cut around the edge of her skirt, but I like it better to cut out a second little hand and place it right on top. That way everything's in the correct order. And again, tap it in place with the tip of my scissors. The last piece is that I stamped a second little head. You don't want her little head sunken beneath the rest of her body, so I trimmed out another one and added it on top, lifting the edge of her sweater so that the collar fits properly right in place. 